One more right-wing media reaction to Kamala Harris's candidacy and now her being the presumptive nominee to take a look at. Laura Trump, the co-chair of the Republican National Committee, the daughter-in-law of Donald Trump, appeared on uh, Fox News. And I saw this clip because Mike Sington described it as such. Quote, this is insane, Laura Trump says. Lord Trump has meltdown over Kamala Harris live on Fox News. So we're going to take a look at this, see Lord Trump's reaction. And yes, it's uh, yet another example and now a long line of examples of MAGA folks sort of showing their hand and showing their own insecurity and panic about going up against Kamala Harris. Here's the first moment. See, co-chair, um, they just anointed Kamala Harris. Uh, she's received no vote. And when I mean no votes, I mean she was the first one out of the race. She never got a primary uh, vote. Now they've anointed her as a leader. She didn't get any d Democratic primary in this election as well. So what do you make of this? They, they said they were going to run on democracy. And this seems real Democratic. <laughs> All right. Before she responds, I have to quickly say they didn't anoint her. They. Who's this they? She had been, no doubt beforehand, doing some work. Then after Biden dropped out, did a bunch of work, hundreds of phone calls, I think, were reported on all day long to call up and coalesce support of prominent names. In a moment of uncertainty, it was an easy sell because people want certainty. And it makes a whole lot of sense. The running mate that Biden's been running with the whole time, as he's running in these primaries, he's proudly running next to his running mate, Kamala Harris. And it makes sense that unity would take place around her in a case where he says, I've decided after the primary process to no longer accept the nomination. It would be anti-democratic if you had figured out how to take the nomination without his consent. That's not what happened. He decided after getting those delegates before the official nomination process to say, I'm not accepting that nomination. And thus, Let's see who gets the support of these delegates. And Kamala Harris has been very effective at getting the support of those delegates. Now she's secured enough to be the presumptive nominee. But this they uh, anti-democratically anointed Kamala Harris nonsense is getting on my nerves. If, I know this is a long rant, but I really want to address the talking point. If you had someone else come out, Gavin Newsom, right when Biden dropped out and said, I'm looking to be the nominee now, then you could see them battle it out for delegates. But all the people have endorsed Kamala Harris, making it clear she's going to be the nominee because we're hungry for unity and she's the running mate. It's been Biden-Harris the whole time and this is how the rules go. She's coalescing support around herself and getting those delegates. Lawrence, it is such a joke. Look at the other side. Oh my gosh. We had to basically get a proof of life in a phone call from Joe Biden, the current president. I'll remind everybody yesterday, whenever Kamala Harris went to that Wilmington campaign office, this is insane. Do they really think the American people want to vote for this party? This is what this party is doing to the You seem to think they want to vote for this party. Country? Wow. You are exactly right, Lawrence. I'll remind the audience how the process is actually supposed to work here in America. These folks in Washington, D.C. actually work for us. We the people. We are actually supposed to vote for them and elect them to these offices. And yet it appears a lot of people for a long time knew Joe Biden could not actually run this race and actually probably shouldn't be president of the United States right now. Some people might say that it that, that June 27th debate with Donald Trump, which was obviously disastrous, maybe was the first step in pushing Joe Biden out. Then you had the press conference, the NATO press conference, where he stood up in front of, uh, you know, the, the country and, and really. You know what I don't understand before playing another clip from this? I don't understand why everything has to be this they that feels conspiratorial. Maybe there isn't this small group that's as in charge as you think they are. Meaning, they can never just explain things as sometimes chaotic situations take place. We've seen it in politics before. We saw it just recently. We're going to see it again in the future. Sometimes... In this case, a candidate, and this can happen without a powerful they 
perfectly selecting the debate's going to be where we initially hurt him. And then we're going to do a press conference. It's not going to go well. And then we're going to pick Kamala Harris instead. Maybe Biden, with some concerns, but has a really strong record and is the incumbent president, said, I'm going to get in this thing. And primary voters, in a not really competitive primary, selected Biden to be the guy. And then before the official nomination, Biden, maybe it's what we saw publicly that happened and not some behind the scenes conspiracy. Then Biden, because of pressure from people and people explaining the facts to him that it's looking like maybe you couldn't win, chose to not accept the nomination. And then Kamala Harris was endorsed by him. And so for the sake of unity, for the sake of, or because of the fact that she's the vice president and her efficacy in coalescing that support around herself, she's now the presumptive nominee. Maybe there's not this powerful they that has masterfully planned this, because I can tell you, if there was, they would have planned it better, because this is sort of stressful, I have to tell you, and not exactly the best position to be in, but it's looking better every hour. Quick pause from your viewing of this video to request that you subscribe if you're not already to this channel. We've heard some people saying that they'll subscribe and then check back later and they're unsubscribed. That's not good. So if you could make sure that you are subscribed, even if you think that you are, I would greatly appreciate it. Back to the video. So the, the fact that they are now changing pace on the Democrat side, right. cramming Kamala Harrison, and by the way, not, not trying to find a running mate who the American people can actually look to as a leader, who would be a great leader. They're looking at the, the votes. They're looking at 270. And how does the math work out to get them to 270? They don't care what you think, America. They don't really care if you mm. have the best leadership as long as they can retain power on the left. It should be right. a, a disgusting scene for every single American when you look at the left right now. So, Laura, are, are y'all... <laughs> wait, 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 wait. She said, they don't care what you think, America. That's why they're trying to pick a VP that will make you vote them into power. Isn't, isn't that caring about what America thinks, trying to pick the best VP to win? And I would do a sort of qualifications conversation about whoever is picked is going to be super qualified, a good leader. But let's not even do that. Yes, Laura Trump. I fully admit to what Laura Trump just said, except for the not caring and not all that stuff. But the initial premise, yes. I want a VP to be selected who will make Kamala Harris's ticket the strongest to get 270 electoral votes. You're right, Laura Trump. Do you know why? Because I care about the American people and Trump winning is disastrous for that is disastrous for the American people. And also, how dare you pretend like considering the electoral impact of a certain VP choice is somehow bad and not completely normal? I think every VP ever in the history of presidential politics has been selected with the political outcome in mind. And you know they're grasping at straws when they're literally grasping at straws, being mad at Kamala Harris for at some point mentioning that probably we should phase out plastic straws. And also they're grasping at straws when the best argument or one of the best arguments they have is, well, they're just going to pick a VP who they think will be good for them politically. That's sort of always been the selection of a VP. And, and they're going to pick someone among a pool of very qualified contenders. It sort of reminds me of how they get really upset when people point out that, for example, Kamala Harris would be the first female president. Oh, but so you just you just wanted her to be president because of her identity. No, no, no. It's exciting that she would break a barrier. That's always cool. Is it not a little weird to you that we have 50-50 in gender breaks down? But... 100% in the presidential uh, position, but also the first thing that has to be considered is her qualifications. Could she be a good president? And then after saying, yes, she could, we add on top of it. And that's super cool. So stop with this ridiculous logic. All I see here is fear, fear that they're going to lose. And we have a lot of work to do. Me being excited throughout today's show, maybe a little bit too excited. And uh, maybe if you don't understand why I'm so pumped. But it's 
more of a hopeful thing rather than a, we got this in the back. We need to do the work. So make sure you're still motivated to do the work. You can donate to Kamala Harris's campaign by going to the link in my description. And if you donate at that link, then you're contributing to our million dollars by a million subscribers uh, mission, goal. And I'd appreciate if you do that. And if you want to get extra content daily, you can do so by clicking the join button below.